The vast oceans of planet Earth are incredible things. They've captured our imagination for as long as we've been able to think, and the mysteries of their depth still intrigue us to this day. So, what would happen if we got rid of them? What mysteries would be revealed? And what would happen to the planet, us included? The answer may not be as simple as you expect. Before we dive in, let's just get one thing crystal clear. There is a lot of water in the ocean. 321 million cubic miles of water to be exact. You could completely fill up the Grand Canyon more than 3,000 times with that. If you were considering storing the oceans in your kitchen cupboards, there'd be enough water to fill 352 quintillion, 670 quadrillion gallon-sized milk containers. To put that into perspective, the amount of milk containers is approximately 47 times the number of grains of sand in the entire world. Obviously, it wouldn't be very efficient to empty out the sea into milk bottles, but it illustrates the sheer volume that lies in every valley, crack, and crevice of the deep blue. So, with an understanding of the colossal amount of water in our oceans, it's time to figure out what would really happen if we waved goodbye to all that water. There are many hypothetical ways to drain the ocean, but three particular methods are the most intriguing. All three of these scenarios would result in vastly different outcomes. To say the least, we'd all be in serious hot water if we lost our oceans. Or more accurately, hot desert. But I'll get to that shortly. Let's begin with the most extreme scenario. What if, as per the cruel intentions of a supervillain with a glamorous glove, all our oceans disappeared instantaneously? It's safe to say we would have some serious problems. Anything unlucky enough to be caught out at sea would start to fall. For the first time in history, whale hail would be falling from the heavens, crushing any unlucky critters on the seafloor. Swimmers in shallow water would most likely survive with a few broken bones but ships out at sea wouldn't be so lucky. Boats in shallow water may just escape gravity's wrath, but those in deep water would plummet and smash into the bottom of the seafloor. Everyone on board the ships out in the deeper parts of the sea would be killed on impact. It's not difficult to see why. Take the Titanic, for example. When the Titanic sank, it was in water two miles deep. Without the sea in the way, it would have taken 30 seconds to reach the bottom of the seafloor. For ships this high up, gravity would have enough time to accelerate them to the speed of an airliner. That's around 500 miles per hour. As for the rest of life in the sea? Most likely, the majority of sea life would die in the following minutes, and if not, slowly suffocate to death. But if the sea vanished instantly, those at sea wouldn't be the only ones to feel this effect. An enormous vacuum would be created in the empty space where the sea once was, which the Earth's air would quickly try to fill. This would send violent, savage winds tearing across Earth, possibly even strong enough to tear up the ground. Those winds could well approach 200 miles per hour, and hurricanes and tornadoes would burst up all over the world. Changes in the pressure level at the bottom of the seafloor where the ocean used to be would lead to huge earthquakes and landslides on an epic scale. All in all, it'd be a disaster, and the awful changes would continue for a long time. I'll get to the long-term effects of an oceanless Earth shortly. But first, what if the process wasn't quite so sudden? The seas vanishing instantly is, according to the laws of physics, impossible. But what would be the implications of something more feasible? Let's begin by posing a question that every curious kid asks their rubber duck at some point. What if there was a plug hole at the bottom of the ocean? For convenience, let's assume the water is somehow transported off Earth. A standard bathroom plug hole drains at an estimated rate of 7 gallons per minute, which is 10,000 gallons per day, or 3.7 million gallons per year. Using this method, it would take over 80 trillion years for all the water in the oceans to drain. For some context, that's almost 6,000 times longer than the entire universe has existed. Needless to say, this method would not be useful if you were hoping to take a hike to the bottom of the Mariana Trench in your lifetime. It would need to be much, much quicker to have a noticeable effect. 
So let's imagine a scenario somewhere in the middle of the previous two. Seeing as the internet has left us all with the attention span and patience of a goldfish, I'm aiming to have it all gone in one minute. But what about logistics? A good place to start would be hooking up some very long tubes to the most powerful pumps in the world. The open ends can be dropped at the deepest parts of the ocean, and any places water is likely to pool as the seas are sucked away. And as for the other end of the hoses, there's really only one option. We'll launch them into space and keep them there dumping our seas into the abyss. Zooming back down to Earth for now, the most powerful pump in the world, used to prevent flooding in the Netherlands, pumps 13,000 gallons of water per second. In just one minute, that's almost a million gallons of water. Under normal circumstances, that'd be impressive. But for our needs, it's pretty pathetic. To empty the ocean in one minute, you'd need to pump six quintillion gallons of water per second. That's enough water to fill nine trillion Olympic swimming pools. Even if you covered the entire surface of the moon with Olympic pools, you still couldn't fit that many. As a matter of fact, you'd need 300 pool-covered moons to hold it all. And that's just one second's worth. Then there's the issue of power. To get to that rate of 6 quintillion gallons per second, you'd need 460 billion of the most powerful pumps on Earth. Each one uses around 4,000 kilowatts of power to operate, so you'd need 2 quintillion kilowatts of power to get them all going. Of course, the pump array would be enormous, so you'd want to store it off Earth. Just look at the size of one of these pumps on a semi-truck. But that's the least of your problems. 2 quintillion kilowatts of power is about 12,000 times more than the total used by humans on Earth in an average year. So in one second, you'd essentially be using 12,000 years worth of energy. All I can say is, I hope you found a way to harness dark energy, because those puppies need some juice. Assuming you had access to the necessary power and equipment, what would happen down on Earth if you drained the oceans in under a minute? It certainly wouldn't be smooth sailing. Some of the most violent changes would occur in the first day or so. Due to the sudden, uneven loss of a large portion of the Earth's surface, some parts of Earth's crust that were previously kept in place by pressure from the sea would crumble onto the sea floor. Not only this, but as the Earth's atmosphere and air redistributes itself, cities at high altitude would become uninhabitable almost instantly. Inhabitants of those places would soon suffer from altitude sickness, nitrogen narcosis, and mild oxygen toxicity. Cities affected by this change would include La Paz in Bolivia, Lhasa in Tibet, and Santa Fe in New Mexico. If that seems bad, imagine the terror of the sailors, fishermen, and luxury yacht owners, trapped hundreds of miles out at the bottom of a now empty ocean. For the rest of us, the worst effects would come in the following weeks, months, and years. For starters, there'd be no more seaside getaways. Aww. Because the sea acts as a large heat sink, its sudden disappearance would cause global temperatures to rise over time. Along with the wide-scale droughts and dehydration of all living things, the dryness and heat would combine to form ravaging, traveling wildfires across the globe. Coastal towns would no longer be coastal towns, but endless, dry, salty deserts. But not being able to go on vacation would be the least of your worries. Did you know that a large proportion of the oxygen we breathe is actually produced in the sea? Tiny organisms called phytoplankton produce around 70% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. If they all suddenly got sucked up in a huge drain pipe or were left to dry out in the empty seabed, we'd all suffocate pretty quickly without emergency oxygen tanks. If you didn't die from suffocation, landslides, or wildfires, you could look forward to dehydration soon after. Lakes and rivers would evaporate quickly, and we'd be left with no water at all except bottled supermarket water. We couldn't fall back on rainwater either. The sun would make short work of evaporating any remaining clouds. The entire water cycle would soon come to an end. Although scientists may desperately try to come up with some new way of turning urine and organic matter into water, in the long run, their efforts would be futile. After all, many scientific machines and all of the human thinkers would require, you guessed it, water. As if that wasn't bad enough, all the rotting fish and marine life left on the now dried out seafloor would smell like the devil's gym socks. 
finally, there'd be a few long-term cosmic implications of this rather unfortunate twist in Earth's fate. The sea makes up only a tiny fraction of the mass of the Earth, but its absence would still have an effect on our closest neighbor, the Moon. If any of us survived, we'd see a fractional change in the gravitational pull of the Earth, making the Moon slightly further away from us. As for the Earth itself, it would eventually become a lot like Venus. With an increase in global temperatures and the evaporation of all water, volcanic CO2 and other greenhouse gases would build up in the atmosphere. Trapped up there, the Earth's greenhouse effect would be magnified significantly. As this hot, dry cycle fed back into itself, the Earth's surface would eventually reach constant scorching temperatures. And yes, we'd all die, but we'll probably all be long gone before then. But, while our luck would eventually dry up, there'd be at least one silver lining. If we somehow avoided being torn apart by wind, suffocating, dying of starvation or thirst, being swallowed up whole into the Earth's crust, <gasps> there could be some interesting discoveries to be made. Slowly, wreckages of missing planes and ships would be found. Imagine the excitement of a vacation to the mysterious depths of the Bermuda Triangle. Indeed, the historic mysteries of the deep and the disappearances of hundreds of planes and ships could finally be solved. Even the ancient lost cities of Alexandria and Atlantis might finally reveal themselves. Not only this, but the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the ocean, would become an insanely huge new canyon, an astonishing seven miles deep. That's twice as deep as the Yarlung Zongbo Canyon, our surface world's current deepest. The Mariana Trench could turn into a big tourist attraction, if we weren't too busy being slowly killed by the alarming new conditions on our much-changed planet. But we probably would be. It's true when they say that water is the source of all life. If there was no water on Earth, there would probably have been no life at all in the first place. In fact, water is so essential for all forms of life that NASA's motto throughout the search for life on other planets has been, follow the water. So if you ever hear anyone suggest draining the sea from Earth, tell them to walk the plank and sleep with the fishes. Arg. Or you could just tell them what you learned from this video and leave it as water under the bridge. Did this video make you appreciate the phenomenal power of the sea more? What crazy fact about our enormous oceans surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.